My name is Hunter Santo, and I've been doing YouTube for over a year now. Ever since I was, let's say 12, I've always been fascinated with the idea of doing YouTube. I always saw these people online making these videos that I honestly had no idea how back then. I started my channel a year ago with a few of my friends playing volleyball, not thinking much of it. Really, I have a lot to thank my good friend, Jack. He, he was the one who said we should un we should ironically record this but it ended up being my first swing at being a youtuber and it was just us being idiots and awful at volleyball me and my friends having a good time i got back home it was a good time editing you know it was fun like i downloaded CapCut. i had a lot to learn in editing but i was down to i was ready learning these things that youtubers you know never talked about how to make videos, I started to see that I could be one too. I could be a YouTuber. After I made a few videos of just me and my friends messing around, I started to think, what could I do to get the most amount of views and the most amount of people attracted to my videos? Because that's what I ultimately thought. Views equaled success. Well, which in a sense it does for a growing YouTube channel. Anyways, I would th I was thinking of what niche I could do that would uh, attract a big, au big audience. Damn. I was also trying to take into consideration what I could do without any tools or without anything, you know, something that I could do on my own, that I can do at home without having any tools. Being frugal with my money like not getting any fancy equipment or whatnot or editing softwares things like just using my iphone which is what i'm still using today and a cheap tripod and now this new mic um, i'm not so frugal anymore this thing was like 20 bucks so i stumbled upon sunny v2 he is a major inspiration for the videos i've done the unprofessional documentary series and high top films those two are huge inspirations for that series and so that was the birth of the man who wrote your favorite song this video was super amateur and it has so many flaws looking back on it but i mean it was for my first video i was very happy with it at the time i was it's so funny when you make those videos you think it's the best thing in the world and that everyone will love it, but it usually doesn't work out that way. Usually you get like, I remember getting like 20 people in the first day or first week, maybe I think first week. And I was like, man, what's, what's so wrong with this? I was starting to think of, you know, maybe it's something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with the title. Before I started my channel, I had the intent to do it the summer of last year in that time. I was stalling. I was recording every little thing or taking in information from how to make the most successful YouTube channel, how to get views and how to make your thumbnails look good and all that. And I made this little booklet, this little booklet of all the YouTube information that I carried today. Once I changed a few things to the video, and started incorporating the little booklet I had, I started to get more views. It was like a month later, probably. And it hit 12K. Like, it was so crazy. That was the biggest success at the time for me. That, that was so crazy. When I was at school, I was always checking like the YouTube account. I was always checking like the YouTube studio, seeing all the comments and responding to them and stuff. And, I was just really excited because I was like, this is happening. So I got a hit. I continued to make these kind of videos and that came into my second unprofessional documentary, uh, the YouTuber one. I mean, the title changes a lot. I think right now it's 
something to do with Cory. Cory Kenshin. By the way, Cory Kenshin is one of the biggest inspirations to me. I have so many things that correlate to him. So I mostly dedicated that video to all the YouTubers that inspired me, which was the original title. The original title was YouTubers that inspire me. That video did not succeed as well, which kind of sucked. But around this time, I'm pretty sure my sub count was going higher and higher. Like it was, I remember recording this little video of me hitting nine subscribers and being so excited and like telling my brother to look, see, I'm like nine subscribers. And it was growing in the meantime as I made that other video. YouTubers that inspire me. I made a celebration video. I made a kind of like a appreciation video. And as soon as I posted it, I swear, I kid you not, I think I, I think I screenshotted it somewhere. We'll see. The subs just like stopped after I uploaded that video. I don't know, I don't know what I did in that video to stagnate it, but <laughs> I don't know what happened. You made it all the way to the end. But uh, ah, we were like at 140. I think, yeah, that was insane. The most successful video that I've ever made on this channel was of course the John Bellion video. Why you haven't heard about John Bellion? Purposely, purposely. That video is also probably my least favorite video that I've made. I don't know if it's common or not, but I feel like artists usually hate their most popular song. That's how I feel about this video because I made it a while back before it blew up and I just felt like it was kind of an empty video. It felt like I was just, I recorded a lot of stuff from a lot of John's videos and I just slapped on like a tiny bit of commentary and just a little bit of editing, but mostly it was his videos, which I wasn't very proud of. And I felt like it was kind of lazy. like. <laughs> play a clip of like the ending of the video something that he truly loves and care about you know not be afraid to express it it's so refreshing to also see an artist that you know has proven in the past and that has the capability of reaching the very top but oh, I was just disappointed how i made it but a lot of people liked it i do kind of wish it wasn't my most popular video but you gotta be grateful for what you have. That drew a lot of people in. That was one of the craziest moments. I was at school when it happened, but the video would just like keep racking up views, racking up views. And I still make views today. But I would just, I'd always be checking my phone. I'd always be checking YouTube Studio app and seeing how many comments and video, like views and stuff. And so that's where my YouTube addiction began and when I started to become pretty unhappy. You see, what they don't tell you about YouTube is once you're in, it can really take a toll on you. Do not download the YouTube Studio app. I used to think it was helpful, but it more, more or less just it ruins your mental. I got hooked to those views and likes and whatnot, and the analytics. And it was at the point where I'd, I'd check it every morning, every morning, every time I'd wake up, I'd always check it. When I got on the bus, and I would not stop thinking about YouTube. It was at the point where I wasn't happy with me, YouTube. Like, I wasn't having fun. I was. You know, oh, I gotta think about what video to make next. I gotta think about what documentary style. Like, uh, they're probably expecting me to make another one of these. It started to be, go to the point where all I cared about was views, people subscribing, and people watching my videos. I didn't care about the process. I didn't care about me liking this and enjoying it. Instead, I tried to niche myself down and it didn't work out for me. In these past few months of not making videos, I've began to reflect, you know? I'd have these conversations with my brother and always talk about 
me wanting to keep make keep growing this channel and keep making videos but I just don't know if the way I want to do it will be successful or generate a lot of views and a big audience and all these big things and I then I'd ask am I taking it too seriously all my brother had to say was yeah I think you're taking it too seriously and that's the moment I realized that I have been looking at YouTube wrong for this whole year back then when I was a kid like I was so wondrous when it came to watch like these videos and honestly back then it was just a better time on YouTube it was just so many people doing different things and being creative and being fun and it was just wondrous back then that's what I wanted that's what I wanted to be I wanted to be like them do those things what that is I don't know I do know that I'm not gonna let myself get niched down YouTube nowadays is filled with so many copycats so many different channels literally the same thing I just I don't want to be part of that I want I want there to be a new renaissance for YouTube. In fact, I have a new approach to YouTube starting now. I'm going to do things my way. And no one can stop me because, well, I'm just a guy on the internet. And I want to fulfill my dream as being a YouTuber the way I wanted to back then when I was younger. Truth is, I probably won't forget all the stuff that I learned about YouTube in this time. At least I can present some truth to you. First thing about YouTube that you need to know before you make a channel. Just start. Just start making a video. Because even if it's terrible, you're not alone. Literally everyone's first video is awful. You look at Markiplier, Corey Kenshin, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye. Like, they all have terrible, terrible, terrible videos. My next tip for YouTube. Try not to be so hard on yourself and niche down so hard. Like, it just, it messes you up. Like, I get it if you are trying to grow a bigger audience. It might be a little easier if you niche down, but it might also hurt you in the long run. YouTube is a big place and it's kind of hard to get yourself to grow an audience when you're doing a bunch of random different things, which I get, which I hope I don't do. And sure, that might generate less views and less less subscribers, but in, in the end, if you're making videos about what you like and like to do, there's no better success. And my last and final tip is fall in love with the process. This YouTube thing is going to be a journey for me. And although it's kind of crazy, I'm already a year in, it's only the beginning for me. I see so many YouTubers today that just make overly edited <laughs> garbage content. Just a factory, it's like a machine. It's Mr. Beastification, like that one, one guy made that one video about everyone copying Mr. Beast. Because none of them are in love with the process. It sucks because YouTube's just a lot less wondrous place with so many of the same thing. But you don't have to be that way. I'll never hire someone to edit my videos because I'm falling in love with the process of making these things. They're films to me. Unprofessional, as you might say, but they are. I feel like once you fall in love with the process, you can't go wrong. Once you stop paying attention to the views and likes and subscribers, and just hone in on your craft, making videos that you enjoy first and then people on the internet second i know people say that youtube has gone worse and it's not as good as it used to be which might be true but i want to be a part of the next generation that makes youtube special again maybe if that's a little bit of a ambitious thing to make youtube great to make youtube great again but i'm gonna have my little circle on youtube and hopefully I could get a few people to join me.
even though it might not be consistent in what I do. But that's fine. Hopefully it's more so is just people relating to me in my videos. That's what makes it grow. YouTube's beautiful because you really can do whatever you want to do. And I plan to do what I want to do on YouTube. And I plan to do it my way. Okay, I know that video was a little all over the place, but uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for sticking around, watching the whole thing through. Always appreciate that when you guys do that kind of stuff for me. I uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. See you guys in the next one.